When we talk about Site C in British Columbia, you often hear people say, well, why Site C as opposed to something else? So what I've got is a bunch of alternative options, some of which are still in play. And just because we're building Site C doesn't mean we wouldn't think of other things as well. I'll just uh, run through them and we'll start with this one. This is Alison Thompson with her idea of an option to Site C. The National Truth and Reconciliation Commission recently released their results. Overwhelmingly, it was stated, it's time for reconciliation. There are two permitted geothermal projects in BC by Kangia members. Both enjoy significant First Nations support. In one case, the First Nations are an equal equity partner. In contrast, considering there are seven court cases, five of which have been brought by First Nations against Site C, what are your thoughts about starting the construction of the dam in the next few weeks? Is there any uh, hope for geothermal in BC? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, hope, I, I hope that uh, geothermal does have a future in BC. You know, it's, uh, it appears that, uh, that the resource is there. Uh, the question is whether it can be developed and, uh, and make its way into the system. I think, you know, those who watch sort of the geothermal uh, story are familiar with Meagre Creek, uh, an area in the province where a lot of time, a lot of money uh, was put into trying to develop the, the resource. It's a, it's a risky resource to develop. It takes a lot of exploration. Um, it's completely eligible, you know, as a, as, uh, as a potential resource that could bid into the system. There's no restrictions against it. Uh, it just hasn't proven itself out as something that can actually make it in uh, to our system. You know, as you know, we have quite a diversified system. We have this large hydro back, backbone, but we've got a lot of uh, run of river, wind, we have some solar, we've got biomass. You know, we have quite a mix in the province and geothermal just hasn't been able to make its way uh, into a competitive position. I guess the, the, the comment you're going to hear from people on all of that is that uh, if we weren't building Site C, we might be looking at some other options. Uh, well, we're always looking at all of the options. Uh, we have a, you know, a resource inventory. We're constantly looking at what the mix is. We have a standing offer program. Uh, there's always an opportunity uh, to, uh, to be part of the mix. Uh, Geothermal simply hasn't been able to put in, they haven't put in a bid in, uh, in the previous large power calls. So, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see it uh, make its way forward, but it, it just isn't a viable contender uh, at this stage. And, you know, hopefully it will be, but it's not showing the signs that it uh, it'll be able to enter the mix in the near future. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Justin Cruzen. I'm the policy director with the Canadian Geothermal Energy Association. I'd like to start by thanking Ms. McDonald from BC Hydro for engaging in his discussion regarding geothermal energy. I'd like to continue this discussion for the public's benefit just so we fully explore the geothermal option available in the province. So I'd like to bring up a couple points um, addressing some of Ms. McDonald's concerns that she raised in her interview. I think first of all, Ms. McDonald has correctly identified that geothermal projects have never bid into BC Hydro calls for power. However, I think that BC Hydro continues to be disingenuous about the reasons for this. Now I say this for a couple of reasons. In practical terms, it's nearly impossible for geothermal projects to bid into calls for power without a ge geothermal developer holding a permit or lease. Now why I say this is that there have been around 100 permits sought by the industry. Of these, only a handful have been granted. And this has the pragmatic effect of subduing geothermal development. You can't develop without a permit, essentially. Now, where this is an especially important situation to take into consideration is in the case of Northeast BC. This is actually where natural gas companies are currently creating large quantities of geothermal energy, which happens to be a byproduct of their current industrial processes. So I think this point as well also cast down Ms. McDonald's assertion that geothermal is energy is risky and that we're already creating it in abundance in Northeast BC. Another important point is that BC Hydro's calls for power and the Standing Offer Program, SOP, are non-inclusive of geothermal energy. Now why I say this is while geothermal energy is eligible on paper for these programs, the requirement that power be brought online within three years of being accepted into the SOP is really at odds with the geothermal development timeline and also at odds with international industry norms in this regards. 
I think a final point on, on this subject is I would just want to address Ms. McDonald's assertions regarding the competitiveness, competitiveness of geothermal energy projects. In BC, geothermal developers are faced with a system that does not value many of the benefits that geothermal energy brings to the table. Now when I say this, I'm speaking to the opportunity for strategically placed geothermal power projects. And this includes some projects that are in development as we speak, which can, uh, which can address these needs. These projects have the potential to avoid extremely costly BC Hydro transmission upgrades. And uh, it provides an advantage from the fact that geothermal power plants are baseload energy sources. So basically, they're always producing power, unlike other renewable energy sources. So this increases grid stability. In the case that geothermal power plants are located at the end of a long transmission line, they can actually serve to defer the needed upgrades of lines serving that, need, that area. So I think that when you take this into consideration, the transmission savings alone outweigh the cost of building geothermal power plants. And this essentially renders geothermal power free, or at least to have a very low cost per megawatt hour. Finally, I think something we should all care about is that the U.S. Department of Energy statistics show that geothermal energy projects create more permanent employment than any other energy source. In addition to this, they also create low-cost heat, which is often not looked at, and especially in this case. Not only can this low-cost heat benefit communities, but the sale of this heat has also not been contemplated in BC Hydro's assessment of geothermal power projects. So these heat sales, if accounted for, would actually serve to lower or subsidize the offered price of power for geothermal projects, rendering them more competitive on the market. I think, though, one of the uh, most important points to consider in this whole discussion is that geothermal projects, unlike many other alternatives, they actually enjoy the support of First Nations. In fact, in one case, there is a project under development in BC that actually has a First Nation as a full equity partner. So in closing, I urge Ms. McDonald to recognize these points, and I leave you with the fact that I contend that BC Hydro is serious about investigating the geothermal option. It should uh, move to rectify some of these shortcomings. Thank you very much, and I hope that this has aided in the discussion. I, I look forward to hearing BC Hydro's response.